Welcome back to Lecture 5 of Aerospace Propulsion. And this is Part 2. So, as we were talking about, the timing strongly affects the peak cylinder pressure. And now, here's the same plot from uh, the previous slide, but what we're going to see is, first of all, when the, these timings are. So, uh, this MVT is basically the maximum uh, cycle work, or mean effective pressure um, timing. And then this is 15 degrees after, 15 degrees before. And what we can see is that perhaps counterintuitively, the timing which yields the peak cycle pressure um, does not necessarily correspond to the uh, mean maximum cycle work. The reason is that if uh, w in the vicinity here where we're near crank angle zero, right, there, there's a nonlinear transformation um, of how this crank angle corresponds to the volume of the cylinder, right? And so it's much more important to have higher values of pressure sort of further away um, from crank angle zero than to have a narrow spike near zero. And so we see that when we do this, yes, the cylinder is not maximized, but the area actually turns out uh, to be maximized when we integrate on the PV diagram, which gives us the, the mean effective pressure or the work. So now let's briefly discuss uh, combustion chamber design. Um, so the first thing we have to think about is do we want to design for maximum power or maximum torque? And this varies depending on our application. So if we design for maximum power in a four-stroke engine, which is the only kind that we're going to consider, um, then uh, the power uh, right, is the mean effective pressure times uh, the displacement volume of the engine, so that's the area times the stroke of the pistons uh, times the number of cylinders divided by the cycle time TC, which is just uh, because it's a four-stroke engine, it takes two, uh, cycle, uh, two, two rotations for a cycle, so it's two over two pi over omega, the angular velocity. This displacement volume, we can write this in terms of right, the bore diameter or the cylinder diameter, um, the stroke length, L, and the number of cylinders. So this is just mathematically expressing this. Um, and then we can write the mean piston speed um, here as UP is, is going to turn out to be 4L over TC. Um, so this is just the, the average speed of the piston during operation. And if we make a couple of substitutions there, um, in terms of substituting in TC for this. We end up with an expression here for the power, which says that it's the mean effective pressure times basically something that's proportional to the bore squared times the mean piston speed times the number of cylinders. So this B squared N is something that's essentially pr the proportional to the total piston surface area. So the power turns out to be proportional to the total piston surface area. So in other words, if you want high power, you just basically need to make a bigger engine, either through more cylinders or bigger cylinders. To design for maximum torque, we can use the fact that, of course, the torque is just the power divided by the angular velocity. And so putting in the definition um, that we had on the previous slide, uh, we can simplify and come up with that the torque is simply the mean effective pressure times the, the displacement volume times pi. So the torque is proportional to the total displacement volume, right? So here, um, the stroke of the cylinders comes into play, whereas interestingly, it does not uh, directly come into play for uh, the power. So we also need to think about um, flow and combustion considerations in uh, our combustion chamber design. So we'd like to have high volumetric efficiency, a low heat transfer loss, high reliability for our ignition system, um, high flame speed to propagate the flame front quickly, and we'd like to avoid knock. Um, so what I'd like you to do is take a couple of minutes and think of what kind of ideas you might be able to implement to achieve these. Um, and try to come up with something for yourself before you move on to the next part of the video.